guys, what's going on? It's Mac here. Welcome back to another new video. Today, I've got a cool trick for uh, Adam to show you. Um, that is the wrong window there. Okay, so when we're writing HTML, it's fairly straightforward once you get a handle on it. You know, you start off by declaring a document, and then every time you need to do something, you open up a tag with the less than sign, close it with the greater than sign. W what I'm getting at here is that every little piece of the language functions with the help of a few symbols, greater than, less than signs, semicolons, quotations, an ampersand, and uh, parentheses. And that's not really an issue until we get to something like this. There are a number of occasions where I've wanted to write out chunks of text. Um, this in particular is a, a little bit from the Lord of the Rings. So I definitely don't want to screw this up. This is probably one of the most read bits of text in the world. So the last thing I want to do is make any kind of mistake. And generally the way that, that I would do this is um, one little paragraph at a time and paste it in and then make sure that we do the formatting properly. Because one of the issues that you run into with HTML is that all of these little symbols that are referenced as part of the syntax, it can't really be used inside of text. So let's see, it's, it's doing a really good job and it's not gonna break. But at some point, if you keep using symbols you're gonna come across one that isn't gonna be rendered correctly on your website, and that's a real pain. So I've used what are called HTML entities, uh, character entities, a as a solution for this exact problem, we have just basically a whole bunch of little codes to use these symbols. So for example, they're pretty straightforward. They all start with an ampersand, and then we'll add, say, a colon, and then close it with a semicolon. And that's going to be a good way to rend render the... Well, actually, let's do a, um, a semicolon. Basically, that's going to render as a colon. There we go. Really nice, really easy. But the issue is, this is kind of a lot to remember. Um, it's fairly straightforward, like I mentioned. Not, none of these names are too complicated. But being new to HTML, I decided like, eh, you know, whatever. I'm gonna create a snippet library because I figured out that it's really, really easy to do inside of Atom. All we have to do is up here in our menu bar, come to Atom and click on snippets. And we get this little page with some info uh, kind of telling us how it works with a little tutorial. And up here at the top, this is the important thing. You can create a new snippet in this file by typing snip and then hitting tab. We type our text, our trigger text, uh, and then we hit tab. Up here in the first line, we have a basically a way to declare what type of documents these are going to affect. In our case, we want to do HTML. So I'm going to do text dot html.basic. So now we know that we're writing snippets for HTML. Next thing we have is a name. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and just call this semicolon. And then we have two little sections here. We have a prefix and a body. The prefix is our trigger, and then the body is the snippet. So what I'm going to do is down here in the body, I'm going to add the code for that semicolon, ampersand, and then semi, and then these my colon. And then originally what I was doing is I was using kind of the same method that I was using with um, OSX snippets. So if I want to do a semicolon, I do like SM. And that works. You know, if I do exclamation point SM, hit tab, it'll do the thing. But what I noticed kind of quickly is what I'm figuring a lot of people are noticing right now is that that's really not that much shorter than just typing out the actual entity code. So I kind of stopped messing with the snippets for a while. And then I had this brilliant idea. I thought, what if I changed all of the snippets to just be the symbol? I wasn't even sure if it would work, but I like immediately jumped up, opened up Atom and gave it a shot. And so let's, let's fire this up. We're typing along, we hit a semicolon. I'm like, oh no, I need the symbol. Hit tab, it works automatically. It works so beautifully. I have the symbol already here, but, 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 but. And this is cool. We haven't even gotten to the best part yet. So let me uh, create another snippet for commas. If you highlight these bottom three lines and just hit Command Shift D, it will just make it an exact copy on the line below of whatever you had selected. We don't need to declare the document type again. Everything we type underneath that, it's gonna assume is gonna apply to our HTML. So we're gonna set up one for a comma here. In our prefix, we're gonna add the comma as a trigger, and then let's get the code for the comma. It's gonna be do 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 comma. Yeah, it's just C O M M A. 
So if we're typing, I can type the comma, hit tab, it'll do its thing. But what you notice here is we've already got a whole bunch of commas in our document, um, or actually only one in this bit. Come behind the comma, hit tab, there it is. And of course, that's being rendered as the actual symbol. Freaking incredible. Now that we have all our snippets set up, we should be able to go through and add the rest of our little text here without uh, much hassle. Grab our next bit of text here, paste that in. And every time we see a comma, we just literally just hit tab. And if we see a semicolon, exact same thing. It's gonna be the same thing for the parentheses as well. Tab on these, same type of situation. Okay, gonna hit tab here. Gonna go ahead and refresh our page. And what do you know? It's looking perfect. Well, I mean, not perfect. It looks like standard HTML, but we can fix that pretty quickly. One more time, we're gonna refresh the page. Beautiful. So now I can put copyrighted content onto my, well actually, is it copyrighted? Is Lord of the Rings in public domain? Something tells me it isn't. Jiro Pokin died on 1973. Unless this law is admitted, all of his published works will enter the public domain on January 1st, 2044. Yeah, I remember it used to be like 50 years after the origination and then um, Disney had it changed so that they could hold on to the rights for Mickey Mouse or something. But yeah, so until 2044 at least, I won't look like an idiot while publishing copyrighted content on my website. But that is all for this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I will see you in the next video.